Welcome. If you don't know family law and you're a father, should you hire an attorney? We often get that question in email or in phone calls all the time. I'm recently put on child support and should I get an attorney? The Fifth Circuit in Texas last month in July says that attorneys do not have to engage or join the Bar Association. As you know, the Bar Association is responsible for licensing lawyers within each state. So in Texas, if no one is a part of the Bar Association, how do they get licensed? You may not know this, but states do not license attorneys on the Bar Association. We did a video call, Student Can Practice Law. Uh, please re uh, review that video. It goes along with this topic that we're covering. So when you're dealing with family court problems, the next legal decision you make might have a huge impact on your case. One of the most critical decisions you'll make is to hire a legal professional and to do so correctly. In other words, hiring an attorney. Now, on this channel, we do not dislike attorneys or we hate the legal profession. What we practice is self-help, you helping yourself through your case because you know your case better. But how do you locate an experienced attorney for most of us who can't afford those high-priced attorneys? Well, some of the things you look for are learning. You know, where did they go to school? Their knowledge, their skills, their abilities, their growth, their competence. The reason for that is there is no tracking system for attorneys, whether their, you know, their win and losses. You know, if I was putting together a basketball team or a football team, I could ask for the stats. Uh, how many years that each player played, how many Super Bowl rings, how many championships. I could get that, but when it comes to attorney, you're in the dark. So in this episode, we're going to talk about some key things if you decide uh, to hire an attorney. And for the attorneys who reach out to us on our site, we welcome your questions. We welcome the challenges. Again, we do not hate attorneys on this channel. In fact, if attorneys want to advertise on, on our videos, we'll, we're happy. What we're saying is there are some guidelines in which if a father were to hire an attorney. Now, you probably heard this statement. If you are your own lawyer, you has a fool for a client. And many attorneys tell you that. What they did not tell you is that phrase was actually in a case law called K, K versus Erler. E-H-R-L-E-R, -E 1991. That was the Supreme Court. But what they were referring to was if a lawyer decides to handle his own case, then you have a fool for a client. This did not apply to someone, uh, a non-lawyer, handling their own case. I know, because this phrase has been thrown around so much, but here we do research on this channel and we tell you the truth. <laughs> Hello, my name is Chris, and in this session about hiring an attorney, this is the first time we are presenting this topic, what are the things you should look for if you are? However, as you know, this is a self-help channel, but again, you have the legal right to hire an attorney if you choose to do so. 45 CFR 264.30. As you know, this is the mantra for child support, which is, all men are referred or enrolled in the child support program in order to establish paternity as well as modifying support. So this is the mantra for child support. Now this is, note we've said this in the past, that if you don't want an attorney, then one cannot be forced upon you. And that's State versus Penderville and Moore versus State of Michigan. The Supreme Court came back like, if you don't want an attorney, the judge or magistrate or clerk cannot force one upon you. You always get this, hire an attorney. So let's look at the Sixth Amendment. It's in common law. In all prosecution, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy trial 
a public trial, an impartial jury, as well as they have the benefit of what is called counsel. Okay? Because why? They need to understand the nature and the cause of the case that's before them. And this is no different than in child support. You're being charged with child support. You still need to know the nature and the cause uh, for the case. And you enjoy what is called assistance of counsel. That is, you have the right to choose counsel of your own choosing. So the Sixth Amendment guarantee that you should have what is called effective assistance of counsel. What does that mean? If you were to hire an attorney, you want to make sure that you have effective assistance of counsel. And the case law is Strickland versus Washington in 1984. What does it mean to have an effective assistance of counsel? Well, you have the right to identify effective counsel as well as the Supreme Court clarify if you have Ineffective counsel, there's two requirements. There's a constitutional deficiency and prejudice. If both of those conditions are met, then basically you have a grievance against the counsel that you hire. So I'll repeat that. You have the right to effective assistance of counsel, but if for any reason you have ineffective assistance of counsel, you have a grievance against an attorney. So let's look at the Bar Association called the Model Rules of Professional Conduct. And we're going to look specifically at Rule 1.1. A lawyer shall provide competent representation to a client. Competent representation requires legal knowledge, skill, thoroughness in preparing in a reasonable representation. In Rule 1.3, the lawyer shall act with reasonable diligence and promptness in representing a client. Again, this is the Bar Association rules and requirement when you engage effective assistance of counsel. In Utah, they have decided that, well, there's so many issues with the legal professional, there are people who can practice legal services who are not lawyers. And as we said early in the beginning of this video, in Texas, an attorney no longer have to join the Bar Association, which means they no longer have to be licensed to practice in the state of Texas. And since that happened at the Fifth Circuit, it means it may happen across the nation. In Arizona, in August of 2020, they enacted what is called a non-lawyer legal paraprofessionals. Uh, and they have an acronym that goes with that. And that was in August 2020. And what they're allowing is non-lawyers who wants to practice certain parts of the law, they are allowed to do that. And, and they highlight that. I'm pointing this out, saying that there is a shift going on where lawyers now or people who are knowledgeable about the law are allowed to, again, participate in the legal practice without being licensed. And here it is again, and the Arizona approves non-lawyer ownership of license and non-lawyer access to justice. In Washington, in Washington State, the Supreme Court sunset what is called limited license program for non-lawyers. What they were doing was, and this is June 2020, they're looking at programs where uh, Non-lawyers, again, those who are not licensed by the bar because the state cannot license attorneys, that they will allow what is called a limited uh, license program, and it will be guided. And this was a 7-2 to two decision from the Supreme Court. So as you can see, the trend towards uh, non-lawyers. So if you are hiring a lawyer, uh, here are some of the things that we've highlighted. And again, this channel, we do not dislike lawyers. We encourage lawyers to either advertise or give us questions. Our goal is to ensure that fathers have the best legal representation at a reasonable cost. So here's some of the tips. Ask for recommendations. You know, if you know of someone who's won their case as a father in child support or have gotten favorable um, decisions, then that's a recommendation. Also, do online research. There are not many places where you can research for attorneys. 
Uh, it's it's not like sports where you can pick up the uh, back of a newspaper and there are the stats, results for all the athletes. Uh, you don't you know how to pick your team. You know fantasy football. It's not the same with the legal profession. Next, schedule a consultation with several lawyers in your area. Interview them. Find out you know their skill level, their competency level. Again, you are entitled to effective assistance of counsel okay ask the right questions what are the right questions questions relating specifically to your situation oftentimes i hear it hear men ask this well have you won any case well that's a fair question but the real question is looking at my situation what are the likelihood that i will get a favorable outcome Again, winning and getting a favorable outcome are two different things. The fees and cost. It's very important to understand what you're being billed for and how much your case will cost. What you don't want to have happen to you is that as your case progresses through the courts, your fees start to increase, whereas you now have to pay both legal fees and if you did not have a favorable outcome, you have to pay the child support fees. And next, payment arrangements. Can ask if you can make payments over time. That way you don't have to, if you get a large bill, it's part of your structured payments. We have a, a video call, the five uh, Supreme Court cases that everyone should know. If you are interviewing a, an attorney, ask them about these five questions. That will help you decide whether or not they really understand child support and the decisions of the Supreme, of, from the Supreme Court. This is a good place to start. It's a good question. If there's any hesitation that the attorney does not want to answer these questions, well, that is a red flag for you. So are there another solutions for stopping an arrest? And what it is is that people hire an attorney because they have an arrest for child support. We will continue that discussion um, over time on our news on our new masterclass site, which is childsupport.newzendler.com. As always, on this channel, we've always said you have the right to access to court because that is a Sixth Amendment right, and the case law is Ryland versus Shapira. But also, you have the right to effective assistance of counsel if you choose to hire one. So there you have it. So folks who have been watching our channel, and thank you for watching our channel, uh, here we do not dislike attorneys. What we're saying is there's a minimum standard that you need if you want to defeat the child support program. Thanks. Have a good day.